Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I remind senators that the senators resolved that an officer of the Department of the Commonwealth or of the state shall not be asked to give opinions on matters of policy and shall be given reasonable opportunity to refer questions asked of the officer to superior officers or to a minister. This resolution prohibits only questions asking for opinions on matters of policy and does not preclude questions asking for explanations of policies or factual questions about when and how policies were adopted. Officers are also reminded that any claim that it would be contrary to the public interest to answer a question must be made by a minister and should be accompanied by a statement setting out for the basis of the claim. So for the Hansard record, if you could uh, please give me your name and the capacity in which you appear today and where do you want me to start? Ladies before gentlemen. Good afternoon, Lucinda Hoffman, General Manager of Transport Policy, Queensland Department of Transport and Mainroads. Uh, hello, Carl Frank, Executive Director of uh, Heavy Vehicles and Prosecutions for TMR. Prosecutions, right. I've got some questions for you. Good afternoon, <laughs> Senator. Andrew Mann, General Manager, Land Transport Safety and Regulation for TMR. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senator. I'm Josh Hannan, uh, General Manager of Transport Strategy and Planning at Department of Transport and Mainroads. Tremendous. Uh, good afternoon, Tony Gulp, uh, General Manager of Portfolio Investment and Programming, uh, Transport and Main Roads. Look, thank you for the Department for being here and I thank the Minister for uh, providing us the opportunity to put questions to you. Who's the boss? The reason I ask that is who's going to do the opening statement? I'll do the opening statement. Mr Mann, go. Fire away. Well, thank you for your time this afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Andrew Mann, General Manager, Land Transport, Safety and Regulation. I'm joined by my colleagues from the Department of Transport and Main Roads here today. Thank you for the opportunity to appear at this public hearing. Transport and Main Roads has always taken a proactive approach to improving the safety and sustainability of the road transport industry and is committed to ensuring the safe, efficient tr transport of goods and services on our road network. TMR was pleased to note the recent release of the Productivity Commission draft report into national transport regulatory reform as the Commission's 25 draft recommendations often align with TMR's view on sustainable and safe road transport industry. Queensland's transport system is large and complex and faces increasing performance pressures due to a combination of increasing urban congestion, a growing freight task, impacts from extreme weather events and ageing infrastructure. <coughs> Maintenance and expansion of Queensland's road network is necessary to accommodate the ex expected population growth and keep the system working safely and efficiently. The cost is significant, however the competition between modes for available funding means TMR must continuously find greater efficiencies. Queensland is delivering a record investment into the state's transport and roads infrastructure with $23 billion allocated across the forward estimates in the Queensland Transport and, Road, Queensland Transport and Roads Investment Program. We're now in the second year of that program and approximately $18.1 billion of that investment is in the road network. The Queensland Heavy Vehicle Safety Action Plan 2019 to 2021 highlights an ongoing commitment to improving heavy vehicle road safety across Queensland and reducing heavy vehicle fatalities. With 36 road safety interventions across the key action areas of safer roads, safer vehicles, safer speeds and safer people, the action plan complements the state's broader road safety strategy. In 2019, the Queensland Government released the Queensland Freight Strategy, Advancing Freight in Queensland which identifies the transport and logistics workforce as a critical enabler to ensure the safe delivery of freight today and into the future. The strategy sets a shared vision for the state's freight system, outlining a series of commitments that will guide policy, planning and investment decision making over the next 10 years to give customers greater choice and support economic growth. It will be implemented through a rolling two-year Queensland Freight Action Plan to be released later this year that will outline how government and stakeholders will ensure the freight system continues to keep pace with new technologies and economic conditions. To give you an understanding of Queensland's freight task, in 2018-19 Queensland's freight system supported an estimated 178 billion tonne kilometres of freight services, with road accounting for 29 per cent of the overall freight task. This task is projected to grow by around 15 per cent to more than 205 billion tonne kilometres by 28-29. In February 2019, the National Transport Commission commenced a comprehensive review, review of the heavy vehicle national law in order to deliver a modern, outcome-focused law that will improve safety for all road users, support increased economic activity, encourage innovation and simplify its administration and enforcement. Queensland has made a significant contribution to the progress of this review and will continue to partner with key stakeholders to ensure the new national law will meet the safety and regulatory needs of the community in the heavy vehicle transport industry. 
TMR is positioning itself to deliver on an efficient and more reliable freight network through the Queensland Transport Strategy. This 30-year vision will harness emerging transport trends to move people and products safely and efficiently into the future. By increasing integrated smart technologies into new and existing transport infrastructure, there will also be significant opportunities to reduce costs, improve safety and transform the transport system. TMR is also committed to building an environmentally sustainable and resilient transport system. We support the Queensland Government's commitment to reduce emissions and seek to embed a practical and technical achievable approach to reducing Queensland transport sector emissions within our day-to-day -day business. With regard to access arrangements, continued effort by TMR to improve permit assessment processes and procedures have seen substantial drops in, drops in processing times for all permit classes. From 2018, TMR has reduced permit assessment timeframes from an average of 15 days down to four days in 2020. TMR has also made significant improvements in the administration of access permits. In June 2019, we extended permit duration for oversize over mass vehicles to 12 months, which resulted in an application number drop of approximately 74%. It is estimated that industry will save around 1 million in fees and around 3,300 hours in paperwork. TMR is committed to working collaboratively with industry and stakeholders to develop a shared vision for freight in Queensland. We'll continue to do this and we thank you for your time today and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Mr Barn. I appreciate that. When you throw those figures at us for 28-29, uh, I remember going back a few years when I was told by Main Roads in WA that our freight tasks would double by 2020 and we went, yeah, that should be right, mate, and did nothing to improve the road system. That's a massive task ahead. Got all that, a lot of tonnes, a lot of freight movements. I want to get to something pretty simple here. The biggest criticism that I've found coming out of all of Australia, but particularly on the eastern seaboard, is the lack of rest areas. Now, let's just not talk about roadhouses because that's beyond your remit. Well, the government has a role to play there. But just heavy vehicle rest areas. What does the industry have to do, or how can the industry, before you guys leave the room today because they're all here, or being here, what do, what do I have to do to say, hey, Queensland uh, TMR, how about putting a working group together of the industry representatives? And they're not hard to find. There's, you know, you've got the QTA, you've got the TWU, you've got the Livestockies, you've got Nat Roads, you've got the National Road Freighters. Not a lot more than that. How can they get a working group to sit down with government to say, these are all the places where we need to have quality, heavy vehicle rest areas with a toilet, God help us, give us a toilet, long drops or something, and put some side up saying no caravans. You want to take that task on today? Well, thank because you the because they are spewing. You know, thank you for the uh, question, Senator. Yeah, thank you for the question, Senator. Um, can I start with perhaps uh, giving you some uh, statistics on the number of rest areas we do have? You can. Don't fall into the trap that Osraj tried to pull on me the other day and then give me a lecture about overtaken loads because it, it didn't end well. <laughs> so go for it, Mr. Fun. You're talking no. an old truck here. I understand and uh, uh, totally appreciate that. Um, to give you some perspective, we've got 369 combined uh, rest areas across Queensland. Combined rest that areas. That does include light vehicles and heavy vehicles. And we have 21 specific heavy vehicle ones only, as well as obviously the private ones you mentioned earlier. Hang on, sorry, sorry, 21 rest areas. 21 heavy vehicle only rest areas across the network, but then there's 369 heavy vehicle rest areas across the network that are, that are state funded. Those on the state network. Specific rest areas. The the oh, livestock okay. guys and the other yeah. transport guys have, have said there were none. So no, no, they... there's no effluent ones. Oh, so the, the, yeah. there's a, um, a hard stand. The only no... effluent here are the caravan. Oh, sorry, no, on the <coughs> There's no there's there's a hard stand there's a place to stop, but there's not services amenities. I think Senator the LRTAQ was spe was specifically talking about effluent facilities for the heavy vehicles. For the livestock? Oh, uh, no, no, no. We, we were earlier talking about um, amenities for the truck driver. Oh, OK. Yes. Um, uh, so the 21 specific um, heavy vehicle rest areas, do they have amenities? They do. They all have they're, amenities. they're specific rest areas with amenities, as I understand. But we no, can certainly they provide more. They have a toilet, they have a shower. What, what do they have? They're, they're toilet based. OK. Yep. Truckies only. Yep. All right. You'll obviously have a map that will show us where they are. We'd be able to supply you, you if, if, yeah, if yeah, you yeah, would yeah. like that. 
we can take Keep that on there. So you've got another 300 odd where the grey nomads There's 369, as I mentioned, on the state network, and I am talking about the state network specifically. Um, obviously, there will be additional facilities and, and stopping facilities on the local government network as well. Oh, right, really? yep. okay, yep. Um, and all, what we're working towards, most amenity upgrades, and you were talking about the upgrades earlier, or new amenities, or new stopping sites, Both. generally occur during major infrastructure upgrades, and we do consider that as part of those upgrades. So, for but example... Just, sorry, Mr. Member, can I just say this? And, you know, with, with the greatest of fairness to both sides or all sides here, and those multi, you know, those upgrades, I mean, they're projects can take 20 years we talk about and may take five years to do, but, you know... Help me out here. You know, this is the old trucky thinking here. A truck bow's not that hard. Bring a dozer in, clear a bit of land, put a bit of bitumen on it, put up a sign, no caravan, it's trucks only. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, here's a toilet. What's hard about it when you talk I'd about how many kilometres? What, sorry? I might have to clear a tree, Senator Stewart. Oh. We don't do that in Queensland. That would be oh, okay. very distressing to everybody to have oh, that right, sort of planning. Right. Clear it, clear it. Yep, no worries. So, so Mr Bain, you have to simplify this for me. So I'm not going to let you leave the room until you tell me how I'm going to get you to agree. Do you have to go back to your minister and say, can we put a task force together to start working with the industry where we can identify where we have shortfalls? You see, because our truckies... No, just let me hear you. you see, now I start getting wound up. Normally this time of the day, my span of attention has gone and I'm dozing off. But we have regulations in this land that says to the truck driver, dear truck driver, thou shall not drive any more hours than blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. And all our truckies say, well, that's great. So how do I pull over? How do I have a decent rest? And it might be the middle of the day, it might be the middle of the night. How do I get separation where I've got headlights coming at me at 100 mile an hour? I haven't got caravanners turning off the fridge or whatever it may be. The only way they can do that is to sit with you guys are the experts. I need you to go cap and hand to the minister and say, dear minister, you know, can you put a few pesos over here so we can build a truck bar, you know? How do we get that? Uh, Senator, I suppose the... Um uh, certainly we do and are happy to work with the industry on and on working with them with anything we can do in the future to improve safety for them and absolutely things like but, fatigue management. But how do they get base. to you to say, Mr Mann, with your team, how do we actually get formatted set times where we'll sit down as an industry, hand in hand over a, a scone or a cup of tea and go, these are where we need our truck bays and the reasons being because this is where truck drivers have been killed or this is a point where most of them congregate for a rest. How do they do that? Uh, well, we do engage with the industry weekly. The oh. LITAQ and the QTA we speak to very regularly um, oh, and have well, a very good relationship with That's two-fifths of the industry. That's great. Sure. Yeah. So how many truck bays have come out of that conversation? Uh, I couldn't. I don't have the answer to that I'll question. I'm sorry. You ready? I'll take a wild stab. Am I wrong? Okay, now, how are they going to get a formatted task force to sit with you guys in working good faith to say we have an issue in this nation that says legally we're not allowed to drive excessive hours, but we've got to have quality of sleep? Because it's not only the truckies who don't want to end up upside down on the side of the road, they don't want to kill any other poor bugger on the way through too. Yeah, totally appreciate that, Senator. Yep. So how can we get something going where we have the industry representatives, and there's not thousands of them, that they're structured to sit down with you guys to be able to report back to the Minister to say, Dear Minister, the industry puts a lot of money back into governments, both state and federal, and all they want to do is have the ability to be heard and to work collect or what's the word, collaboratively with the department. We can certainly take that to our Minister, Senator. OK, great. And you'll come back to me at 4 o'clock? I've got respect for your minister. He's pretty good. I just, just thought I'd throw that one in. OK, next. Senator McDonald. Um, thank you very much for turning up this afternoon. I'm having a great deal of trouble getting other departments to turn up to our hearings, um, specifically the Department of Agriculture. Um, so I'm really delighted that you did show up. Um, I'm interested in how we understand what's the outcomes-based outcomes for the department. So we've talked a lot today about um, fatigue management, about um, truck stops, about uh, the sort of penalties that trucks uh, incur as opposed to um, other, other road users. What sort of reporting have you got around tying those changes to actual um, safety outcomes? 
Uh, so are you referring, Senator, to the National Heavy Vehicle Law and how we apply that in relation to... Yeah, I guess so. I mean, well, and, and that's probably a bit tricky because you signed that over um, a few years ago. But the Queensland-specific regulation, because you can't really comment on the, the national, I would assume, but the Queensland-specific regulation around... Um, well, let's do the, the penalties, the sort of penalties, Senator Stirl, that we're talking about. On road about. infringements. On yes, road Frank, infringements. Frank, is that your Thank area? You. Uh, I'm kind of the, the end result of that, but yes, I'm well, happy to take okay, the question. Because I think we, look, we've heard some, I've got some terrible stuff. I mean, RMS are people that you wouldn't want to bump into at the best of times who go on out, and I know it's New South Wales, but they go out of their way to terrorise the trucking industry. And uh, um, anyway, we'll worry about that when we get down there. How does it happen in this state? That's where you're going? Yes, thank okay, you very so much. What happens over here? Do you do it or does the police? Uh, who, who does checks logbooks? Uh, the indicators aren't working. Uh, I don't know. Someone doesn't like the colour of a reflector on the back of a trailer. Is that? It's a, a bit of both. So okay. it's uh, transport and main roads compliance uh, on road inspectors, and also the Queensland Police do um, a component of it as well. So is there any linkage between safety outcomes and the fines and penalties? Not quite. Sorry, I'm not quite sure. Maybe is there a linkage <laughs> between the penalties that you charge people in, and uh, safer outcomes, yeah. road deaths um, and, and uh, hospitalisations, or however you measure it? Do you ever do that? Do you ever link that? No, I'd, I'd have to take that on notice. Sorry, I'm not sure. We, so um, I could probably background. help answer that to some extent. We certainly link, obviously, road safety with certain types of infringements, whether that be fatigue, um, vehicle safety, uh, speed, those types of things, of course, and we do have uh, a lot of research around impacts of speed, whether it be heavy vehicles or other, or light vehicles regardless, and the impacts of that. In relation to how it works in Queensland, and just to probably elaborate to your uh, question, Senator, in Queensland, we operate under the national model with the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator, but we do it under a service level agreement. So our okay. Queensland transport staff do the uh, enforcement on behalf of the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator. Yeah. Similar to that, similar to New South Wales, uh, but a number of other states have transferred that, those staff and that responsibility back to the regulator um, as a full-time basis. So we do it on their behalf under the National Heavy Vehicle Law. Now I know, I understand that a number of um, uh, participants earlier today have talked about, and I think you're referring to the, the large penalties and certainly the number of penalties in there, and I know there was some commentary around things like uh, logbook, logbook penalties and those types of things. Um, we are currently looking at that and participating under the review of the National Heavy Vehicle Law, um, and Queensland plays a fairly significant role there because the, Queens the he National Heavy Vehicle Law goes through the Queensland Parliament. Uh, it's a, it's a state-based law that's applied mm. to the six jurisdictions. Um, so we are playing a fairly significant role, and as a jurisdiction and an interested party, we're, in, we're inputting and working with other jurisdictions on reforms to that law. When you talk about some of those penalties where, um, and there has been some uh, anecdotal feedback in the past around things like spelling and those types of things, there are sometimes offences in that regard. Um, but Often when we look at the actual penalties, they aren't necessarily that issue. It might be a broader issue than that or a more significant issue than perhaps was, was so, reported. So but your officers don't ping truckies for spelling mistakes? I can't say categorically that they have never done that, um, Senator, but what I can say is they apply the law as it stands oh, and, yeah. and uh, under that law there are a number of fatigue-related offences. But certainly under the National Heavy Vehicle Law Review, we are looking at what is realistically linked to road safety, yeah. what is linked to the outcome we're trying to achieve under that law, and reforming that law to make sure that it is more future-focused, modern. Um, as, and I heard a number of mentions earlier today about how old some of that law is, um, and even just under the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator, it's been around for more than 10 years, So, um, uh, and, and much more than that prior to that in, in state-based law. So um, there is certainly work to do in that space, and there is certainly um, some things we can look at around the, the size of penalties and the types of penalties and ensuring that they are linked to a safety outcome. Well, and that's exactly what I'd like to understand, yeah. is is there any work that links the penalty um, to the safety outcome? Because otherwise it's just, it's just yeah. consolidated yeah. revenue and it's not actually about and uh, if you use improving the, safety. Sorry, Senator. If you use the uh, fatigue laws as an example, there are a number of offences in there. There's a large number of offences related to the, feed law, the fatigue laws. 
But underpinning the fatigue laws, um, as you would know, Senator, being a former member of the industry, um, the reason they're there and the rationale they're there is to reduce fatigue, of course. Now, whether or not all of those provisions in that law continue to do that in a modern world, that's what we need to look at now, and that's what is being looked at now. And there's a consultation, Riz, I'm sure you're aware, um, from the National Transport Commission that is currently uh, out for consultation from industry and government, um, and that's part of that review. Can I ask, when you build a new road, um, I assume that even if the federal government approves that TMR signs off on the design, the route, whatever else in Queensland? Uh, that, that's correct. Uh, I'll just have to refer to my colleague Tony just to confirm. That's that correct. That's correct. Senator. Yeah. No. We're uh, in, in in Queensland. We're responsible for for planning, prioritising, designing, and, and constructing the uh, the network and maintaining. So recently, I crossed the Toowoomba Range crossing, and I had the benefit of a, an ex truck driver with me who pointed out that there was nowhere for trucks to stop, if they broke down or had a flat tire or whatever else through that space. And I was. And having since used it a few times, I look at it every time and wonder if I was coming through at night, how safe that would be for everybody. How, how would that happen? How would that happen mm. that a road could be built that's for trucks to use, mm. wouldn't have anywhere for trucks to stop if they had a breakdown? So, line? breakdown lane and no rest area, just to go on with Senator McDonald there, from Pittsworth to Nudgee over the gateway, which is about a two hour drive. Mm -hmm. Look, in terms of how it could happen... Um, oh, I'll it did happen. Yeah. yeah. No, it has happened. Yeah, it has happened, and the it reason happened. for it yeah. to happen, um, Senator, yeah, look, we'll have to, um, I'll have to take that on notice. I mean, obviously, designs, that there are many standards um, achieving multiple outcomes, including safety, uh, the things are constructed to. So, um, yeah, if we can, um, if we can take that away and, and come back uh, with a response. I would really look forward to that coming back on notice sure. and um, understanding how that could possibly happen. I might add something else there. We, we know that's the case because I actually made the statement saying, "Who the hell designed this?" And I did say so because I'm going up the Toowoomba bypass probably around the same time as you, Senator McDonald. Mm. And I actually said, "Crikey, what happens if we if we uh, break down if a truck of a B double? Well, road trains use that road. Mm. Yeah, road train or B double breaks down because my first reaction that long climb is there's nowhere to go, mm. and my second reaction is three plastic triangles with red reflectors. I can save too many lives if a car comes to life or another truck God help us or whatever. Mm. So let's go back to what we do know. We know that there is absolutely no breakdown lane. We know there's no." Uh, rest areas. We know, and I've been told ably by a number of truck drivers, that's the end of the journey. So the truckies are coming in too, at the end of their shift. And I think, I think short, I'm sorry I can't see your surname, Tony, if I may say that. Mm, okay, Phil. This is a classic example where we need heavy vehicle rest areas in that stretch. There's no other magic putting answer. That's a classic example. So I'm really asked, I'm going on from Senator McDonald to say, if the trucking industry had have been consulted, which they should have, that would have been identified ASAP. So, so where do you go from here? I, I know you've got to go back and consult, I get all that. So what we've, we've set a date for questions, for the answers to questions on notice by 7th 5 of o'clock. August? Mm -hmm. Oh, 7th of August, 7th of August. Because I think nothing short of the government needs to say, hell, we have to fix this. Mm -hmm particularly, Senator Stirl, when the road was built to divert trucks through Toowoomba. So it is actually a truck road mm. with no places for a truck to stop. Toll road. Mm. A toll road? Oh, so, oh, you have the pleasure of toll roads. OK. All right, 40 kilometre toll road. OK, there you go. You've probably got the money there ready to go. Sorry, Senator McDonald, you keep going. Um, so I'm also... So I come from uh, northern Queensland and I'm intrigued that your submission has quite a bit on alternate fuels and we live in a huge state, you know that, and I just, I just want to give a shout out to whoever wrote your opening statement to say, you know, it was really, I think, poorly thought through to write a statement for a, a heavy transport um, industry and talk about 
reducing greenhouse gas emissions by improving technology for these vehicles that, um, you know, there's a long way off that you'd be able to provide alternate fuels for these trucks. And then electric vehicles, I thought that was also really <laughs> like, who wrote this? I'm sorry, I was not very respectful and I did not mean to be, but I do think that just looking at this submission, it's not, it's not understanding at all of, of the challenges for the trucking industry and the massive state we have and freight such a critical part of, of everything that we do. And I, I'm just flagging that it, I, I think this goes some way to understanding the culture in TMR. If this is the submission that comes to a Senate inquiry on, on heavy vehicles and transport, and I can only imagine that what you're saying is you want to put everything on trains or, you know, because it's, it's just lacks understanding of what the industry's challenges are. Thank you, Senator. I think just the acknowledgement there around electric vehicles and alternative fuels, mm -hmm. um, and my colleague Lucinda may want to talk more about this, but it was simply to acknowledge that in the future we are going to have different fuel types and different um, vehicle types that will come into the country and, and may be driven out of other jurisdictions overseas, but that in some instances they may be, the appro may be appropriate in the future. It's acknowledged that Queensland is a massive state and huge distances travelled, and for large sectors of the industry, it may not be something that's viable or achievable in the very near future, but it may be for some other operations. Um, for example, it might be something that's viable and we've seen tested in port operations um, around moving freight within a port precinct and those types of things. So that's what it's trying to acknowledge, Senator. It's not, certainly not suggesting that, you know, that all vehicles will be a different fuel type in the next few years, not at all, but that there will be a, uh, a, a use for some of those emerging technologies. All right. um, and probably the last thing I want to ask about is, um, I, we've probably covered off on the on the rest areas. I mean, I've got one more. Yeah, yeah. Um, th I, I do want to understand, in Queensland signing up to the um, heavy vehicle, I'm sorry, I've just forgotten the acronym, NHVR. The heavy vehicle national law. National law, I'm sorry. Um, is that not a duplication of process and bureaucracy between Queensland and a, a national body? Well, Senator, the national heavy vehicle regulator has taken over the regulation role of the heavy vehicle industry. The role that Queensland plays, as I mentioned before, we, we under a service level agreement, continue to do compliance on their behalf. And we assess, for example, heavy vehicle access on the road network based on a road manager and road owner perspective uh, for vehicles that are oversized and overmassed, for example, uh, on particular routes. So our role um, has diminished significantly from what it would have been uh, prior to the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator and prior to signing up to that. And it's transitioning to the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator and has done over the, the last number of years. <coughs> so if I wanted to find out about outcomes-based um, results for their activities. I'll have to ask them when we uh, have the hearing in Canberra. Is that right, Senator Stoll? They'll be coming there? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Certainly the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator has done a lot of work in recent years pulling together data around offences, um, vehicle um, uh, issues with vehicles and modification, not modifications, but uh, vehicle um, uh, problems or, or issues. They've certainly done a lot of work in that regard. Okay, so well then just my final question is just to ask then, can I understand that going forward there is a review of fatigue management requirements in this state, in Queensland, with a view to the possibility of replacing existing paper-based 1938 legislation with uh, more modern um, uh, human-related um, processes? Yes, Senator. So as, as I mentioned before, it's a national review that the National Transport Commission are leading with each jurisdictional input as well as the Commonwealth input in relation to what that looks like as well as industry input and an expert panel that was set up in relation to guiding transport ministers as part of that decision-making process. 
The legislation itself will go through the Queensland Parliament, but that's just because it's designed that way as a, as a state-based, nationally delivered piece of legislation. So we don't necessarily play a bigger or smaller role than other jurisdictions. It's just that's, where, that's the Parliament that considers the legislation. So it's part of that process. Fatigue is definitely part of that process and looking at that. One of the considerations during that process is not only thinking about the future and what technology might be available and making sure the law is flexible enough to adapt to new technology, but also considering the smaller operator who may not want to go down that path and may need uh, or require a more basic or prescriptive um, requirement on them. So finding that, that full balance of, of someone who just wants to know what they need to do versus you know, a, a complex organisation that might want to manage their risks themselves that's where we've got to look at as part of that review, and that's certainly what that review is looking at. Yeah, well, anything that means that truck drivers aren't having to not be able to sleep in their own homes because they've had to stop a quarter of an hour, half an hour down the road, that's such a bad outcome, isn't it, for families and the truck driver and every outcome. Yeah, that's a statement rather than a question, I but guess. It is certainly acknowledged that the yeah. current fatigue laws are you know, quite restrictive um, and have been in place for a long time uh, and certainly need review as part of this process. I do have... Probably not the West Australian system, anyway. <laughs> Senator Stirl, I do just have one more question. Yeah, yeah. Is I, I also right. need to understand why is it that in Western Queensland, how is the budget process prepared that every year we form up, grade and form up dirt roads and then they're all torn up during the wet and then we do it all again next year but there never is any money to seal roads? Like, what is the process that makes you assess the transition from dirt to sealed roads, particularly when we've got so many cattle and minerals running on them and the local property owners are getting out, you know, their own vehicles to drag people out of the mud everywhere. I might have to refer to my colleague, uh, Ian, Tony Philp. Um, so when it comes to um, investment and just looking big picture, Queensland, you know, it's a big competition, you know, large decentralised state. Um, a lot of large to a lot of medium to, to small base regional centres, a lot of competing priorities. You, you've got the, the South East Corner versus regional Queensland. You've got all of your modes, um, you know, whether it's roads, uh, PT and the like. So, yeah, big, big contest. A large, sophisticated system to, um, to carve up what funding we do have available. Um, in terms just specifically um, of progressive sealing of roads, um, it does feature in our investment. Um, just for example, we've, um, we've released a couple of, um, of stimulus packages, uh, one with the federal government, uh, another one with the state. Mm. I think earlier today I, I heard the, some questions around the Concurry to Duchess. Duchess to Dejara, specifically. Okay, so we will finish the seal with the stimulus packages mm. from Concurry to Duchess. Mm. Uh, yeah, so when it gets down then to, to Duchess, to Dajara, so we're, well, we're, in terms of triggers, like just in terms of volumes is a, yeah. is a key consideration. You know, money will be drawn to areas of the network, mm -hmm. for example, uh, where volumes are, are higher compared to where they're lower. Well, when you're looking specifically at that road, could you look at the Morbin River crossing? Mm -hmm. Because every year it collapses more and more. And for trucks that are carrying cattle and minerals, you have to get a big run up from one side. And one of these days we're going to kill somebody on that road because it narrows to one lane yeah. and it's a um, blind corner on both other sides. Sure. Um, and there's, Main Roads has recommended that that is a high priority bridge to be replaced. So if you could... Um, Take a look at that. Sure. Uh, sorry, there was another follow-on to that. Oh, well, I know. So when I come to Brisbane, though, is that I go on roads around here that I go, oh, my God, this was just being torn up recently and it is now smoother than the proverbial. You know, it's just beautiful. You'd be able to drive your electric car at speed on that road. You're so cynical, Senator. Oh, I am. <laughs> I'm but, living in the here and now. We, we struggle to get serious money spent on roads that generate income. Sure. And, and again, that prioritisation from bike paths in Brisbane to dirt roads um, that, you know, there's a, there's a financial cost to dirt roads for bananas or cattle or sure. anything so like that. When it comes to, to freight, 
and, and particularly priority freight. So we've got national key accredited freight routes, uh, and then we've got a cascading hierarchy um, below that uh, of key freight routes. Again, just back to the investment, and I won't go too deep because it gets quite technical. Um, the, you know, the higher priority, um, the more that will score and rate uh, when we're assessing investments in the particular part of the state. Uh, so look, I, I take your point, um, whether it be investing on trains, bike paths, um, the condition of our roads, bridges, guardrails, overtaking lanes, take a pick. Um, you know, there, there are many challenges in the network. Um, you know, we, we believe we're doing a pretty reasonable job in getting the money to the areas of, of greatest needs. Um, that, that, that as well, it's not just based on our view. I mean, we're listening to consultation before. We, we can always do better at that um, in so terms of engaging. So I with could ask you to take on notice then, some sort of loose uh, breakdown between um, um, roads maintenance into the southeast, sure, um, so as opposed to each other, each of the shires. Um, so we, just in terms of our just the way we carve up the state and our, our districts and regions. Um, yeah, happy to, to provide um, some information, some figures uh, around the maintenance uh, and rehabilitation spend uh, in those areas. That would be terrific. And then if you could match that against income generated, so sure. freight priority routes, um, that would be perhaps interesting to understand then we'll, we'll, how it ends up as it we'll, does. We'll overlay those priority routes. And Thank you, Senator Searle. I was waiting for the McDonald Farm road to come up. But anyway, um, <laughs> can I just leave it on this one, Mr. Nguyen? I'll put the question to you, but I think it's for Tony. Um, Gympie to Brisbane, is that a national freight route? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so Bruce, would, Bruce, Bruce Highway. Oh, yep. Bruce, okay, yep. so that would rate up number one. Because it's been raised with me with a number of truck drivers that... Uh, uh, there's a two and a half hour drive. You've got the BP Burp and Garen. I'm going to rely on the locals here because it's been it was last century since I went up that road. So from uh, Gympie to Brisbane, is that two and a half hours? That's about right. And we've got yeah. the BP Burp and Gary, which has the space for eight trucks. That is the only facility where trucks could pull up, correct? Yes, well, the, we are in the process, and whether there are actually shovels in the ground, I, I just can't say with certainty, but certainly the investment is locked in for a new large commercial fuel truck stop. Um, At Burp just, and Gary? No, no, no. Oh. Um, just where it, used, where it used to be. Um, it's a, on the Kuroidakara proposed yeah, upgrade, look, yeah. um, which is prior to like a, like a seagull, it's just prior, to, in. prior to Gympie. Um, prior to Gympie, okay. 200 kilometres north of Brisbane. 200 kilometres north of Brisbane. Okay. Exit 200. Okay. Yeah, where, where, the, where the former Matilda was yeah, up there. Yeah, exit 200. It's, there's a replacement for that. Alright. So you're looking at... Yes, we'll not, not looking, you'll come well, back to us and let us know. Sure, we'll give you the details. Okay, later. but we're still 200k then from there to Brisbane. Sure. I'd, I'd like you to look at also, uh, you know, because um, that's still a long drive at the end of the journey. If there is uh, the option for this working group that you're going to put to the minister to find out where you can locate a truck bay or four between here and there for us as well. Can you do that, please? All right, fantastic. I don't have any other further questions. Oh. No, 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 that's right. And thanks, guys, for turning up. Okay, Friday afternoon, we'll let you get going. Thank you very much.